vantage point today, right? Vantage point, and it's going to be taken from Numbers 22 to 24. There's two chapters, but we needed two chapters. Don't get, don't get worried, right? We needed one chapter, though, 40 verses. And um, in this one chapter that we are going to read, please listen attentively and also know that I will ask for responses from certain characters in that situation, in that story, right? And one of the characters would be Balaam, the next one would be Balak, the next one would be Donkey, and the next one would be God. So look out for those characters, right? You say you understand your role, you understand your role, right? And after we finish after I finish the verses, um, I'll ask you all for uh, respond accordingly. And for the understand, right? We are yeah, looking yeah. to do that right. So I'm going to read 40 verses from Numbers 22. I never read, read 40 verses aloud before, so you have to bear with me, right? Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this morning. We thank you, God, for the praises, O Lord God Almighty, that was lifted up to you, O Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, for the prayer, O Lord God Almighty, that was lifted up to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask you, O Lord God, to keep the keep, O God, being present in this place, O Lord Jesus. I pray, O God, O Holy Spirit, that you will rise up amongst us, O Lord God, that you will use our tongues, O Lord God, to speak what you are saying unto us, O Lord God, because everybody is in this message today in the name of Jesus. Christ. So, Father God, help us today. We just say we pray. Amen. Amen. Right, there you go. Numbers, take a follow. Numbers 22. So, our background story is that the Israelites looking to conquer the land and they reach the Moab, right? So, there you go. Then the Israelites traveled to the plains of Moab and camped along the Jordan across the across from Jericho. Now Bela, son of Zephyr, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was terrified because there were so many people. Indeed, Moab was filled with dread because of the Israelites. The Moabites said to the elders of media, this horde is going to lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. So Balaam, son of Zephyr, who was king of Moab at that time, sent messengers to summon Balaam, son of Baal, who was at Petor, near the Euphrates River, in his native land, right? So I want to just pause there to highlight that Israelites came up to Moab and just like that they got fearful because of the reputation that precedes the Israelites, right? And we as a people, sometimes we go in people's space, sometimes we just arrive, right? And all of a sudden they don't like you. You ain't do, you, you ain't do them nothing. Right? You didn't say a word, you just step in yeah. into their presence yeah. and all of a sudden they don't like you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Only a snake is threatened when someone is in its presence. Yeah. You understand that? Yeah. So don't be like, why people didn't like me? Why, why, why are you looking to attack me? Because you yeah. see, it's, 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 it's nothing against you really. Yeah. Right? It's all about who you represent. It's all yeah. about Just don't know what happens in the spiritual realm when you step in a room. Okay. It's almost similar as a director or a principal or a pastor steps in a room. All the time you're talking and that's what you step in the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly, right? So 
we have to recognize that we have a presence just like the Israelites. Amen. We have a presence and there's a reputation that precedes you. And we've got one. So, so Balak said, if people have come out of Egypt, they cover the face of the land and have settled next to me. Now come and put a curse on these people because they are too powerful for me. Perhaps I will be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land. For I know what I know that whoever you bless is blessed, and whoever you curse is cursed. The elders of Moab and Midian left, taking with them the field for divination. When they came to Balaam, they told him what Balak had said. Spend the night here, Balaam said to them, and I will report back to you with the answer the Lord gives me. So the Moabite officials stayed with him. God came to Balaam and asked, Who are these men with you? Balaam said to God, Balaam, son of Zephyr, king of Moab, sent me this message. The people that has come out of Egypt covers the face of the land. Now come and put a curse on them for me. Perhaps then I will be able to fight them and drive them away. But God said to Balaam, do not go with them. You must not put a curse on those people because they are blessed. Hallelujah. The next morning Balaam got up and said to Balaam's officials, go back to your own country for the Lord has refused to let me go with you. So the Moabite officials returned to Balaam and said, Balaam refused to come with us. Then Balaam said, sent other officials more numerous and more distinguished than the first. They came to Balaam and said, this is what Balaam son of Zephyr said, says, do not let anything keep you from coming to me because I will reward you handsomely and do whatever you say. Come and put a curse on these people for me. Amen. But Balaam answered them, even if Balaam gave me all the silver and gold in his palace, I could not do anything great or small to go beyond the command of the Lord my God. Now, set, now spend the night here so that I can find out what else the Lord will tell me. At night, God came to Balaam and said, Since these men have come to summon you, go with them, but do only what I tell you. Balaam got up in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the Moab night officials. But God was very angry with, with God was very angry when he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the road to oppose him. Balaam was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand, it turned off the road into a field. Balaam started beating, well, that nice, nice speech in the language. Balaam started beating the donkey in order to get it. beat it to get it back onto the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path through the vineyards with walls on both sides. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it pressed close to the wall, crushing Balaam's foot against it. So he beat the donkey again. Then the angel of the Lord moved ahead of them, well, yeah, and stood in a narrow place where there is no room to turn. Watch my sometimes go this corner here. Amen. I had a less for that right here. Either to, it have no room to turn, either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it lay down on the Balaam, and he was angry and beat it with his staff. Then the Lord opened the donkey's mouth, and it said to Balaam, What have I done to you to make you beat me these three times? Balaam answered the donkey, You have made a fool of me. If only I had a sword in my hand, I would kill you right now. 
the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your own donkey, which you have always ridden to this day? Have I been in the habit of doing this to you? No, he said. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with his sword drawn. So he bowed low and fell face down. The angel of the Lord asked him, Why have you beaten your donkey these three times? I have come here to oppose you because you because your path is reckless one before me. The donkey saw me and turned away from me three these three times. If it had not turned away, I would certainly have killed you by now, but I would have spared it. Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned. I did not realize you were standing in the road to oppose me. Now if you are displeased, I will go back. The angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but speak only what I tell you. So Balaam went with Balaam's officials. When Balaam heard the Balaam, that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him at the Moabite town on the Arnon border at the edge of, the, of his territory. Balaam said to Balaam, Did I not send you an urgent summons? Why didn't you come to me? Am I really not able to reward you? Well, I have now, I have come to you now, Balaam replied. But I can't say whatever I please. I must speak only what God puts in my mouth. Then the then Balaam went with Balak to Kiriath Uzot. Balaam sacrificed cattle and sheep and gave some to Balaam and the officials who were with him. The next morning, Balaam took Balaam up to Bama, Baal, and from there, he come, he could see the outskirts of the Israelite camp. And I made it with all 14 verses. Yeah. 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 Woo! <laughs> so we're going to list at least three, per three perspectives, right, of each character. Right? I want the response from you. So we're going to start with Balak, right? What is Balak's vantage point? How he sees this situation, right? He does want three responses. So if all you guys have to do is raise your hand and the mic will come to you. Let's go. So this is okay, your perspective from his vantage point was that these people were coming to fight out his people. Right. Next one. Um, from his perspective of vantage point, he was not ready to take them out or take them on. Alright, cool, cool. Why, why, why he wasn't ready to take them on? Because he saw them as being a formidable force. Big in numbers and the Lord was on their side. Okay, alright. Anybody else? He was afraid because their reputation preceded them. Mm, mm. Alright, so, right. so Belakis was the king of Moab, right? Balaam was a unique prophet, yeah? He's a mercenary prophet. He actually works. Hey, yeah, what a prophecy? All right, come give us some dollars now, right? Like the way how Balaam was. And also, he had a unique way. He was, his reputation was actually to curse people. You understand? More than bless. And he had the ability to listen to both the evil spirits and to God. Right? So that Balaam right there. So let me hear. He spawns from Balaam's point of view, from the whole story, even with the when he was riding the dog donkey and so on. Raise your hand first before you respond. Right. Right. Well, I want to add, I was just looking right now. The that he didn't know the Lord, so he was blind. Right. Right. He didn't know the Lord. His, his, his vantage point was skewed. Right. Um, and Balaam, I think from his vantage point, he was, in the beginning, he was willing to work, especially based on what he said there, he was willing to work for anything. Right. Until the Lord spoke with him. Right. Or to him. 
Yes. That's one point. We are looking for two more points. Balaam was in it in one. Uh-huh. As many ministers. Yeah. Wrong motives. Mm. Of the Dallas. Not ministry. Ah. Good, good. Alright. So that is Balaam there. The next one, next character is the donkey. What is the donkey's vantage point? What, what is his perspective? The donkey was faithful. A faithful servant. Uh, 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 alright, alright, he disliked the donkey. Why why he disliked the donkey? Alright, the donkey was bad. <laughs> ah, the donkey recognizes God. Ah. Donkey recognizes the animals know who God is, eh? <laughs> Now God, what is God? Vantage point on all, on this whole situation. See that God can use anything or anyone to save his people when it comes to full protection. God is separate. He doesn't need people to take a lot of way to use as far as an animal. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Let's go to this side. 
So he showed Bela, Bela the vantage point from this side, watching Israelites. Now curse them for me. Bela end up coming back and blessing the Israelites. No, 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 no. They understand. They go to this side. They go to this side. They walk. Hills and valleys. They walk. Come to this side. What? What? Watch it from this vantage point. You see what I'm seeing right now? Bilam say that eyes. I will come back. Let me see what I would say. Bilam end up blessing Israel. Bilam can understand. So Bilam, Bilam say, okay, here what? Let me come to this side. Alright? Because I feel I feel the need to see the, the, the other side of Israel. You see, you see what they're doing? I need you to curse them for me. Balaam said, okay. But only say what God said to do. He come back and for the third message to Balaam, Balaam. Balaam said, Blessings of our honor Israel. And if you realize that the vantage point is that Balaam had to carry Balaam all around Israel, all the sides of Israel, to try to find out which part is part of Israel. We sometimes end up in the category of Israel. There are people online scrolling, 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 looking to see all the sides of you. Looking to see, okay, what, what, <laughs> this, this, what, 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 People who you don't know, who you are not aware of, is already scrolling the internet and looking at the status, looking at the things that they post just to crucify you, just to curse you. Even ourselves, we even look bad on our own selves. I remember um, Raquel taking a picture sometime back, and Raquel said, no, this is my good side. Yeah, understand? We sometimes say we have a bad side and we have a good side. We analyze ourselves on all sides and say, hey, nah, 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 nah. You know, because we have a certain vantage point or viewpoint on our own selves as well. We have to realize that there are people out there who is checking you out. When you step out, they are checking you out. When you get your house, they are checking you out. When you get your car, they're checking you out. When you get that promotion, they're checking you out. You understand? When you walk away, they're checking you out. Whatever you do, they're checking you out.
Yeah, not changing your mind when you drive around and say, go left. Yeah. Yeah. There are many situations that God is in charge of and God is running. Watch man. We have to realize that our vantage point is not the only vantage point that there is. Balaam ended up doing seven messages. Seven messages to Balaam. Three of it was direct blessings to Israel. The last form was an attack to the nations that was coming up against Israel, including Moab. He ended up cursing those nations so that Israel could prevail. Hmm. Let me show you what happened to Balaam. In Numbers 24, verse 1. Almost done. Now when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not resort to the divination as at other times, but turned his face toward the wilderness. <laughs> when Balaam looked out and saw Israel encamped tribe by tribe, the Spirit of God came on him, and he spoke his message. The prophecy of Balaam, son of Baal, the prophecy of one whose eye sees clearly, the prophecy of one who hears the words of God, who sees a vision from the Almighty, who falls prostrate, and whose eyes are open. How beautiful are your tents, Jacob, your dwelling Nehemiah built back the wall of Jerusalem. Jesus. 
and they gathered the Israelites from near and far. And they were sharing the laws of Moses, speaking the laws of Moses day, about three days or days, they just speak and they talk in the Bible, like how I say 40 verses and I find out 20. You understand? They just speak in the whole thing. It was Ezra who was reading. And Ezra said, on the day the book of Moses was read aloud in the hearing of the people, and there it was, from written that no Ammonites or Moabites should ever be admitted into the assembly of God, because they had not met the Israelites with food, they hadn't met the Israelites with water, but Hiya gave them to call a curse on them. But <laughs> how You are going to open your own eyes to see them differently. 
Hallelujah. Listen, mm -hmm. they are not the problem. You just have to change your perspective, your vantage point, and everything will be all right in every situation. Yes. 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 Y